McBurney is currently taking Broadway audiences to the Amazon in The Encounter, which is playing at the Golden Theatre. Today, we're in our own version of The Amazon to catch up with a British writer, actor and director. So Simon McBurney, yes, you're, you're bringing me. the Amazon to Broadway, so we thought we'd bring you to the Amazon in that our very is. realistic set here. <sighs> Yes. Um, you're living the dream. The show, The Encounter, starts at the Edinburgh Festival, yeah. goes to the Barbican, yeah. and now is on Broadway. I mean, that's a trajectory that you... Did you imagine when you started out with this? I had no idea. I mean, it's a piece which is very different to anything you're ever going to see. It completely immerses you in a whole other world. But I, th I guess, you know, one of the curious things is that you go to the theatre and then you put on a set of headphones. What the hell is all that about, you know? And it's had rave reviews across the board, everywhere it's gone. But let's talk a little bit about that concept of, of the headphones, because it is very different. You, you mm. turn up in the theatre, there are sort of water bottles all over the stage. You yeah. sit down, there are some headphones behind your seat, you put them on. I mean, where did you even come up with this concept? The piece is about a man alone. And if you like, it, very simply, the idea of the man alone lost in the middle of the Amazon. And it's based on a real life photographer. This isn't is absolutely it? based true on story. a real story, a true story. It actually happened, and it's very, very strange and very extraordinary. But the picture of him being lost, or the image, or the sensation of him being lost and totally alone, is something that I wanted the audience to actually feel. I became fascinated by a really strange microphone called a binaural head. So it's like my head, exactly like my head. It's the same shape, same ears, got uh, ears almost molded to mine, if you like. So when you put m headphones into that head, it's like your head, totally. What do I mean by that? Well, you hear something behind you, you hear something here, you hear movement all around you in 360 degrees, you know, virtual reality for the ears. Now, the point about that is that when, when you're plugged into it, you feel that you yourself are on stage. The point about this is that to feel alone and to feel lost is a physical sensation. And I wanted people to really be immersed in that sensation. At the heart of this piece is also a question of the environment. I mean, and you our came, relationship. You went to the Amazon, didn't you? And I went to the Amazon. Lauren McIntyre is a photographer for the National Geographic, was, he's dead now, but he was one of the National Geographic's most famous photographers. And when he got lost in the Amazon, he found himself in the middle of a tribal people called the Mayaruna. They're part of the Matses tribe. It's a very big tribe. But at that point, they were uncontacted. And then he found himself with them, and he was unable to communicate with them. But also, he was there to take photographs, and his camera was destroyed. He had no way of getting back. And so his whole point of view of the world begins to change. And this is at the heart of the piece, is how do we, us, you and I, all of us here, anybody the other side of this camera, think about the world? And what is happening to the world? What has been that? oddest experience you've had with an audience because they're having all these strange experiences you blow in their ear at one point i do it's uh, a little it, cheeky it is cheeky i mean what, what's it like watching the audience reactions when you're sort of doing slightly outrageous things to them that have never been done before they won't have ever experienced before in their whole life but it's kind of you know the thing is once you're speaking to them it's a very intimate situation it is. And so you are both inside their head, and I whisper to them right in the middle of their head. I mean, I'm slightly freaked out, because I went to see the show, and now you're here, and you were in my ear. That's right, and you go from, you know, I go from one end uh, ear, ear to the other, I walk across your brain, I... Uh, you're but behind then I, me, behind you're you. in front of me. That's right. And then, um, and, and it is a, a highly, as you're right, it's a highly sensual experience, and the sensuality of the human being who is close to you is one of the themes of the piece. Now, you've directed on Broadway before, you're a Tony nominated director. Acting on Broadway, completely different experience, I imagine, for you here it's in It's wonderful. York. I am an actor. Um, that's where I began. You know, obviously, you know, I perform in movies. I've got a movie coming out with Brad Pitt in a few weeks, Allied. It's weird, I, I veer between kind of 
big popular movies like Mission Impossible. You were creature. Uh, I was creature in Harry Potter. Harry Potter. All the way through to kind of stuff which is really, I like weird stuff as well. Do you have any dream projects left? I mean, it sounds like you've, oh, yeah, you've basically I've, I've, worked I mean, with everyone. I mean, you've had the most extraordinary career. I mean, I feel like I'm only just getting started. Really? And so to be on Broadway is wonderful. Also to be on Broadway with something that is mine, it's not a musical, it's not a famous play, but it is an experience that people will, I guarantee you, will never have had before. When did you decide acting was for you? Because on some levels you had a very traditional English upbringing, school. Oh yes, very traditional. But your, your dad was amazing, your dad was an archaeologist, and he, but he was best friends with Alan Turing, who basically saved the world in World War II. So when did you decide in that in, in incredible upbringing that actually acting, the theatre, was where you wanted to go? The theatre. The theatre. Well, my mum always wanted to be an actress. And remember, she was from a generation, I said to say remember, but she was much, she was quite old when I was born. So she really belonged to, you know, the 30s, 40s generation. And when she said she wanted to be an actress to her father, she, her father said, women don't work and they certainly mm -hmm. don't go in the theater. Things, thank God, have changed. Yeah. But at that point, my mother was unable to do it. So when I was little, she wrote plays for us. And so, you know, I cannot remember a single year of my life where I didn't... You weren't in a play? I weren't in a play, not one year. In fact, my, one of my very, very closest best friends, Mark Rylance, had exactly the same experience. His mother wrote plays for him. And so it was just... An he's, he's done all right for himself. He's done okay. I mean, you know, how many Tonys? Three Tonys later. Yeah. I mean, he... And counting. Yeah, yeah. And an Oscar. Yeah. Uh, but the thing of just doing it means that when you decide to become an actor, it's not like a decision. You think, oh my God, the bright lights. No, you just go, well, I can do, that's what I do. I play, you know. And I had a, once had a teacher who said, anyone who's forgotten, any actor who has forgotten what it is like to play as a child should not be an actor. So is Brad Pitt still playing when you're on oh, set? Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, it, listen, when you're on set with any of these people, they're just actors. When I first met Al Pacino and I did this, I directed him in uh, Arturo Ui uh, in New York in, in 2002, I was terrified meeting him because he was my legend. You know, I'd been yeah. I was brought up on The Godfather and, I don't know, Serpico and all these incredible films. I got in and I, my heart was beating, but within 30 seconds, you know, we were wrestling on the sofa. <laughs> we were, you know, we were... As you do, we were have a wrestle around. with Al Pacino. You we know. were playing around because he's a, you know, he, he, he's, like all actors, he wants to play. Yeah. What do you hope audiences take away with them from the encounter? What I hope is not only will the audience be completely gripped, but also in some little way that their brains will be rewired, that they will feel that their imaginations take them so deeply to another place that when they come out into the street, they begin to see the world in however small a way, they begin to see the world anew. Thank you very much for doing this today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.